The rich are getting richer, and the poor are getting poorer. I'm sure many of you have heard this before, but what does it actually mean? We hear the terms income inequality and wealth inequality thrown around, but how should we be thinking about those? If you think about it quickly, something like wealth inequality is kind of obvious. Rich people have more money than poor people. Well, of course they do. Those are the definitions of being rich and being poor. So what do we really mean when we say that there is growing wealth inequality in our country and around the world? I'm Jeff Gallick, and on today's episode of Data Demystified, we'll unpack wealth inequality and see just what it means when we say that it is getting bigger and bigger with time. A quick warning before we get into it. I'm going to be showing a lot of graphs in this video. I'll do my best to unpack the key points of each graph, but if anything is confusing, please comment below and I'll do my best to reply to help clarify whatever I can. Having said that, let's take a look at this graph. This is the average wealth of Americans over the last 30 years. I'm going to focus on wealth in this video rather than on income because wealth is a better measure of how prosperity changes. Incomes can change rapidly, but wealth lingers across generations for a very long time. What this graph is showing is that the average family's wealth went up from about $350,000 in 1989 to nearly $700,000 in 2016. But wait, let's pause that for just a second. There's nothing incorrect with this chart or the data, but doesn't it seem a bit off that the average American family has $700,000 in wealth? Something about that just doesn't feel right. We hear stories about Americans not having enough to pay for healthcare, childcare, and even food on some occasions. How is it that the average family has nearly $700,000 in wealth? Well, this is where we need to take a big step back and think about what an average is and compare it to something very similar, but a whole lot more informative, a median. We need to do that because most of us think of average as meaning typical, but that's not always true. In fact, average or mean, as some people prefer to call it, has a very specific meaning, and that meaning changes quite a bit depending on what type of data we're dealing with. Once we can understand how to think about the typical person rather than just the average person, we'll return to this graph and try to make a bit better sense of it. To help build this intuition, let's imagine a very simple world of exactly nine people. I'm going to zoom in here so that you can get a better view of what we're talking about. In this made-up world, let's also assume there's exactly $90 in wealth. And by wealth, we're saying that if you take all the stuff people have, including money in their bank accounts, the value of their homes, their cars, and so on, and subtract anything they owe, like credit card debt and mortgages, we're left with a total of $90. In a world with absolutely no income inequality, each of our nine people will have exactly $10. We just split up the total pie evenly across everyone. And now we can figure out what the average person's wealth is. That's easy. We just take the total amount of wealth across everyone, or $90 in this case, and divide that by how many people we have. That tells us that the average person has $10 in wealth. But what we're trying to say here when we compute an average is what the typical person looks like in terms of wealth. In this example, an average is a great way to do that. The typical person absolutely has the average amount of wealth, $10. Now let's look at a different and a bit more realistic case. Instead of everyone having the same amount of money, let's assume that some people are wealthier than others. So we'll move some of our $90 around and put the poorest person on the left and the wealthiest person on the right. Doing this, I first hope you see that the average doesn't change at all. Remember, the average is just the total amount of money divided by the total number of people. That hasn't changed here at all, so the average wealth is still $10. But now it seems strange to say that the typical person has $10. It actually looks like some people have a lot of money and some people have very little money. So how else can we describe this made-up world to get a better understanding of what is typical? Well, let's consider a different way to define the typical person. Instead of dividing the total amount of wealth by the number of people we have, let's think about the middle person. If we line up all our people from the poorest to the richest as we've done here, who is in the middle? Here we see that the middle person has $5 in wealth. That is what we call the median. The reason that looking at the middle person is so useful is that it tells us that exactly half of the rest of the people have less wealth than the middle person, and exactly half of the rest of the people have more than the middle person. This is another way of saying what the typical person has, because this is literally the person right in the middle of everyone. Also, there's a lot of focus on the middle class when we talk about wealth. It's not really clear who exactly falls into the middle class, but if I had to guess, the person somewhere in the middle of everyone else in terms of wealth surely must be middle class. So another way to think of this is what is the typical wealth of someone in the middle class? 
And what's nice about looking at the middle person is that we can get a really good sense of typicality even when the allocation of whatever it is we're looking at isn't very even, as is the case in this example. To help build the intuition behind the difference between an average and a median, for just one second, let's take a look at a different and a bit silly example. Height of my favorite animals. I'm going to line them up from shortest to tallest, just like in our wealth example from poorest to richest. If we were to say, what's the typical height of my favorite animal, it's pretty clear without doing any math. It's somewhere around the height of a sheep or a dog. We get that intuitively. However, if we were to compute the average height by summing all the heights and dividing by seven, the number of animals we have, we get 5.7 feet, which is actually closer to the height of a llama. But if we look at the middle animal, a dog at about 3.3 feet, we get much closer to what we mean by typical. Of course, the reason for this is our friend the giraffe over here. Because the giraffe is so much taller than all the other animals, he distorts the average away from what is typical. In this case, the middle animal is a much better representation of what is typical than is the average animal. The exact same thing is true for wealth. Looking at the previous example of wealth distributions, we have a few people who make so much money that they act just like the giraffe. They distort the average away from the typical. In fact, though not a perfect measure of this distortion, the difference between the median and average can tell you how uneven a distribution like this is. In our first example of perfect equality, the average person has $10 in wealth, and so does the middle person. Those two values are the same, which indicates that there really isn't any inequality at all. But in our second example, the average of $10 in wealth is much higher than the middle person's wealth of $5, which tells us that we have some pretty serious wealth inequality. So what we now hopefully realize is that the average wealth of a person is really not that useful a measure on its own. We want to get a sense of what a typical person's wealth is, but when we have a lot of inequality, Using the average gives us a very warped perspective on this. Let's return to our graph from the start of the video. Again, here we see the average wealth of American families over the past 30 years. It's certainly gone up quite a bit. But what about median wealth? In other words, what was the total wealth of the American family that was right in the middle of everyone? Well, that has barely changed at all over the same 30-year period. Even though the average wealth roughly doubled, the median wealth hardly increased at all. If we now take our understanding of average and median, we should hopefully see that the most likely way that this is possible is if inequality increased over the last 30 years. In other words, by looking at the change in the difference between average and median, we can see that the wealth increased for the wealthiest people, but not so much for everyone else. There's one more way we could look at how wealth is distributed across the US population to make that really clear. Let's zoom in again and see what that looks like. What I'm going to show you here is a pretty typical way people think about wealth inequality. Basically, rather than having nine people, as in the earlier example, I'm going to create nine groups of households. By the way, we talk about households rather than people because most people who live in the same household pool their wealth together. That's not always true, but that's the way things are tracked by the US Census, the Federal Reserve, and basically any other agency that measures wealth. Anyway, the way I make these groups is by first sorting everyone in the US based on wealth and then forming nine equally sized buckets. So if we have about 120 million households in the US, the first bucket's going to represent 10% of that, or about 12 million of the poorest households. The next bucket will represent the next 12 million households, and so on, with the final bucket representing the 12 million richest households. Let's start by looking back to 1989, about 30 years ago, and see how wealth was distributed across these buckets. Before we do that, we already know the average wealth from our chart before, and that is about $346,000. But let's see if that average is all that useful in understanding the typical or middle household. The first thing we see is that the first bucket of households, the poorest 12 million households, had zero wealth in 1989. Make of that what you want. As we start moving to the right, wealth starts to increase because that's how we organize this chart. Stopping at the fifth group, those are the middle people. Here we see that back in 1989, the middle or median household had about $87,000 in wealth, a whole lot less than the average of $346,000. And this is all because of the folks to the right of that middle person. We see that as we keep moving right, wealth increases, and it increases very quickly. In fact, the top 10% of all households in the US were defined as having more than $686,000 in wealth. Of course, some of them had much more wealth, but if you had at least $686,000 in wealth, you were part of that top 10%. This unequal distribution of wealth is what we typically call wealth inequality. We're not necessarily saying that this is a good or bad thing, 
but it sure does exist. So now let's fast forward to 2016, the latest year we have good wealth data for. I'll put this right next to the 1989 data so you can see how things changed. The first thing to note is that the poorest 10% of households in the US now have negative wealth. In other words, they have more debt than they have stuff. Again, make of that what you wish. Moving to the right, we see that over the course of nearly 30 years, almost nothing has changed for the households in the next few buckets. Pausing at the fifth bucket, our middle, we see that wealth really didn't change much for our middle person over this time period. But where the changes really happened are on the right side of the chart. Let's go all the way to the right here and look at that last group. The top 10% of households in the US nearly doubled their wealth over this roughly 30 year period, at the same time that the middle households barely increased its wealth at all. In other words, wealth inequality skyrocketed. This graph is what explains the difference between the median and average wealth being so different from each other. Going back to the very first graph, the reason we have such a large increase in average wealth, but virtually no increase in median wealth, is because income inequality has ballooned. Wealth didn't increase evenly for everyone over this 30 year period. Rather, it increased for the wealthiest Americans a lot, and a lot less for everyone else. So when we think about wealth inequality, we need to think about what it actually means. Saying that some people have more wealth than others really isn't saying much of anything. When we say wealth inequality, what we want to see first is how much is there. Well, we can get a loose approximation of that by comparing the average wealth to the median wealth. Second, we want to know how it has changed over time. If that gap between average and medium wealth is growing, as we see it is, that means inequality is growing too. More generally, what I hope you see here is that this is really a recipe for how to understand what is typical across a bunch of data. An average is just one way to think about what is typical, and often it's a pretty poor measure of that. Medians, or thinking about the middle person in a distribution, are another, though also not perfect, way of thinking about what is typical. Most important is understanding that the relationship between these two measures can help you understand how evenly something, be it money, height, exam scores, or even something like batting averages, is distributed across a group of people. If you can understand this, you'll be able to better participate in our data-rich world. If you found this interesting, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, if there are topics in the world that involve data and you want to get a better intuitive understanding of them, leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to create content meant just for you, my viewers.